This must be the place, Professor Oubier's house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans, an appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching a story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. But I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. With one mighty bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. Nice couple. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. Ew, disgusting. Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. There was something short, fleshy, and gross on the carpet. It was the worm from the bottle of tequila. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end, but this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. It was a stylish little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. I wasn't going to get through those sturdy bars. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Labano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush, and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave 
his telephone number. Labino figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. The cabinet was locked. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. The panties I'd found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. With a well-aimed squirt of his soda fountain, our unshakable hero saved the day. Now it was time to start looking for Nico. I wasn't going to burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico. Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You'd better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. The pot contained a key. I unlocked the door. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was? Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? My girlfriend. Ah, what it is to be young and in love. Will you share a bottle of wine with me? Hey, listen, I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. So my company isn't good enough for you. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently he's an expert on Mayan art and history. 
gotten a little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If it'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. I couldn't snatch the man's flask while he was looking. Old garçon? He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. What's that you're drinking? It's wine. What do you make of this dart? Ah. I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. The poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft. What do you make of this news cutting? Of niche supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above that. Oh! Total eclipse of the sun. Well, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. Tell me what you make of this note. From my years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type with an Oedipus complex. Hey, you've got just about everything apart from the ponytail. Hey, you. Well, I'd like a cup of coffee if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. I had nothing else I wanted to ask the gendarme. Un café. Thanks. What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me, I didn't sell it to him. Do you know a guy called André Lobino? Oui, I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No, I have not seen him today. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and a watertight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Look at this. A poison dart. Ah oui. Sure. It's the real thing. Knocked my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. I wouldn't normally call you but Nico's in trouble, Andre. Deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her. And he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Oubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? A 
So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh my god, you mean I could be in danger too? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Where did Nico get the stone? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with... smuggling. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubie? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. Tell me about your friend to Ubier. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. Does Ubier employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? What can you tell me about this pot? Mm, South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank. The Glees Gallery. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kala. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. <clears throat> we'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe. A highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. Excuse me. What? Didn't you try to appeal against your dismissal? There was no point. It was my word against that of the chief inspector. And he was a close friend of the director of the museum I was supposed to be patrolling. <sighs> Excuse me. Leave me alone. <laughs> 